3.6 is our last um, section of the chapter and we're talking about solving systems of linear equations. And this is something we've seen already in the chapter in the last couple sections, right? You've had to solve systems as part of um, longer problems. You've seen this in years past. So I expect you guys to know how to solve two variable systems already. Um, so I want to start just by looking at what some of these uh, systems look like graphically. Well, if I find a solution that satisfies a system of equations, I'm dealing with one point that satisfies both equations. So there's one point here, call it x, y, where the lines intersect, intersect, and I have my one unique solution. But I can have cases where I have no solutions either. And if I have some kind of a point where um, I have no unique solutions, then I never have a point where the two um, where the two lines meet. And that would mean that I have parallel lines. And then finally, if I have infinitely many solutions, then infinitely many points satisfy the system of equations, which means I'm dealing with, well, it's not the best hand drawn, but you see the idea. I'm dealing with the exact same lines. We say that these lines coincide. That usually means if I have a system of equations, so I have, I'll just call it equation one and equation two. Well, then that would mean that equation two is usually some constant, I'll call it C, times equation one. Usually there's some kind of a scalar we'll call it, between the two um, equations that actually make these more or less the same line just written with um, proportional coefficients. Well, since I'm expecting you guys to know how to solve systems already, let's look at something a little bit more difficult. So if I want to find uh, my value m, which is a real number such that this system has no solutions, we should start just by solving this system. And I think the easiest thing to do, I'm going to start by numbering these so I can just kind of refer to my equations here. I think the easiest way to solve this one would be to do it um, by substitution. So if I look at this first equation, and I have 4x minus y equals 1, well, I can move some things around, and I get y equal to 4x minus 1. Add the y, subtract the 1 which means I can take equation one and plug it into equation two. So I now have, let's see if I can color code again here, three x plus m times four x minus one equal to two. So just by simplifying here, I have four m x minus m equal to 2. And you notice I'm color coding the m just to get it to stand out differently from the variables uh, because I want you to see that that m is actually a constant, right? We're using that um, and treating it like a real number. Oh, I want to solve this for x, right? So I should try to get x alone. Let me add that m over. And then if I'm trying to solve for x, I should factor out my x. So I have 3 plus 4m x equals 2 plus m, which means I can divide to solve. So I have 2 plus m over 3 plus 4m. And I'm going to stop here for a second. I don't need to go through and solve for y, because I want to look for where this system has no solutions, which means whatever I have for x, I need to have some sort of error, for lack of a better word for either x or y. Well, if I look at what I have for x here, I have a rational expression. And one thing I know I could never have is division by 0. So if I could force this to be division by 0, then I know I would not have a real solution here. All right, if I could set this up so that my m value would cause me to divide by 0, I would never have an answer here. And I would get <coughs> negative 3 fourths. So I have negative 3 fourths, m is negative 3 fourths, and this would be the value of m for which I would have no real solutions. 
so there's kind of this added step, right? We're starting by doing just our normal um, equation solving, system solving, but with one added step and kind of thinking through the, the conditions that I would need in order to make this uh, system fail, for lack of a better word. So if I move on and look at this system as well, and there are two parts now to this equation, or this problem. I want to find my p's that are real numbers so that the system has a unique solution. Um, this part is going to be no different than what we just did. But then I actually want to go through and solve the system, and that's when it's going to get a little bit messy. But we can do it, and I know we can handle it. So we're going to start, I think actually the best way to do this one is to do it by elimination. Right? Substitution could get a little bit complicated. You could still do it by substitution, just like you could do the other one by elimination, but I do think it's going to be easier if you do this one by um, elimination. So I, we're going to multiply, I think the p, the x's are going to be the easiest to cancel out, so I'll multiply everything by p. And I'll multiply everything in the second equation by negative 2. So I end up getting 2px plus, I'm just going to distribute that p now, equals p, and I'm going to get negative 2px minus 6y. And I like to line up my uh, variables as best as I can, which is why I have this big gap here. We're going to combine these equations, these cancel. So I have p squared minus p minus 6y equals p plus, uh, minus 4. And we're going to divide. And this is where I want to stop. For the system to have a unique solution, I need to actually be able to get a number here. So unlike last time where I wanted m to be equal to the value that would produce division by 0, I don't want to get 0 in my denominator. So p squared minus p minus 6 cannot be equal to 0. And well, if we factor and solve this, it would mean that p could not be equal to 3 and negative 2. Right? It would be p minus 3 and p plus 2. Yeah. So as long as p is not equal to either of those numbers, then I have a unique solution. You could actually trust this on your own. Pick any other value. You will get a unique solution. Plug in 3 or negative 2. You wind up dividing by 0, and we don't want that. And it says, hence find a unique solution. Well, I'm already halfway done with the problem because I already have y. And now I need to find x. All right, so we have y. We want to find x. So let's go back to into either one of our original equations. Um, you can do it either way, but I think the second one might be a little bit more simple. Um, so we're just going to substitute. And I'm just going to do my distribution now, I think, to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Uh, p squared minus p minus 6 equals 2. And we're going to move that whole first term over. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so I have px equals 2 minus 3p minus 12 over p squared minus p minus 6. And I think we should take care of some of that simplifying now. So I have 2 times p squared minus p minus 6 minus, I'm just going to, I'll leave it in parentheses for now, p squared minus p minus 6. We'll deal with the left-hand side in a minute. Let's try to make this a little bit nicer. I have 2p squared. Um, I have minus, I'm just going to do all the distribution. Minus 3p plus 12. p squared minus p minus 6. So I have 2p squared minus 5p over p squared minus p minus 6. Um, and then, so instead of thinking about this like dividing by p, because we really don't want to deal with a complex fraction, let's actually deal with this and think about this as multiplying by 1 over p. And that might make things a little bit easier. And what we notice on the right-hand side, um, well, there's actually a common term over here, right? I could rewrite that as p times 2p minus 5. So let's get rid of those p's. So I'm left with 2p minus 5 over p squared minus p minus 6. And amid all the mess, we've finally made it to the end of the problem. Um, so now we just have to write our final answer. 
So we're going to say that my unique solution x, y is always going to show up in the form 2p minus 5, p squared minus p minus 6, and then p minus 4, p squared minus p minus 6. And we also want to make sure we list our two conditions. Don't forget those conditions. Um, if there's something about the problem that you need to mention and need to restrict, you need to state it. Um, otherwise, the solution is not complete, right? If I just eliminated this all together, then that solution would be complete because these two values are actually not true. So we want to make sure that we can um, be as thorough and be as complete as possible.